Okay. So this is the demonstration for uh, antibiotic cement rod prepare preparation. And uh, to prepare this, we need some instruments uh, like a wire, a strong wire for the core of the cement rod, so it can be placed and extracted easily without any breakage of the cement. It is good to have a beaded wire which is beaded at the end so that can go at the end of the cement rod and it will provide some more strong support whereas a plain wire can be used as well. Uh, we need a cement uh, which has to be preferably a low viscosity cement will do better so it have, we have uh, more time to play along. Uh, it includes uh, powder and the solvent. Uh, and uh, to prepare a strong antibiotic, although it has uh, already in included gentamicin in it, but you can use another like vancomycin, which is a heat stable antibiotic. Other than that, we will need a uh, uh, syringe, a large bore syringe. We have cut it to provide a more larger bore in order for proper delivery of the cement. We need a uh, large bore chest tube, preferably 36 or larger and gully pot to mix the cement and some instrumentation like surgical blade and uh, for wire bender in order to provide a hook at the end so it can be extracted easily later on okay so we start off with uh, mixing the cement uh, in this case as just for preparation we are not going to add vancomycin right now but you can add one gram of vancomycin easily and it will not cause any disturbances in the bonding of the cement and will eat a good uh, bonding mixture. Start mixing. Since this is a low viscosity cement, we will have a lot of time to play along and uh, uh, Preferably, uh, we'll be able to demonstrate uh, the antibiotic cement beads as well. Okay, so now we start to pour down the cement in the syringe. It's a 60 cc syringe. There we go. And now we can lock the chest tube over the hub of the knee syringe and just insert it all the way inside. You can see it's a low viscosity cement and we have not taken a lot of time and not allowed the cement to settle down. So it is going pretty easily into the chest tube. Okay, we're done. I will just keep inserting so we have the adequate length. You can get the length on the x-rays, on the extracted nail or measure it manually with a ruler. And now I will insert the wire in the center of the rod. This will ensure the proper structure. Don't worry, some of the cement will come out. It does happen because the wire is getting inserted. And we keep the tip at the corner so it supports the whole of the cement. Okay. So now we let it settle down for a little bit. We want to know when the cement is in the setting phase, we will cut it out and take it out and we'll show it to you.
later on. So now we go and prepare the cement beads. So these are uh, proline sutures, which will be twisted along yes, a pair of sutures. These are straightened, the needles are cut and these will be intertwined together. So they will provide a firmer structure on which the beaded beads can be made. You can see the cement has started to set up. Look at the consistency, it is changing. And this is the good time so we can prepare the beads. So we have locked both of the sutures at the corners with knots so they don't uh, they don't dislatch they don't disintegrate and we have locked it firmly tightly with our three forceps so they are kept taut together and the beads can be applied easy second knot okay I have the consistency that is good enough but it, it this will be a good time to apply the cement on the proline sutures so we can have beads a beads have to be not too big they have to be around one centimeter in size olive shapes are preferred uh, these will increase this this will increase the surface area of the beads they should be around uh, 0.5 to 1 centimeter apart you see this is the right time the cement is in a good setting phase it is not but it, it is not not that bad so it's not falling down Otherwise, if it is too wet, the cement will start to fall off the proline suture. So uh, uh, we have uh, two personnels doing same work from the two ends of the suture and that makes it uh, more easy, quick and comfortable. These beads are almost ready, and there are these are a good uh, spacer for eradication of infections of the two spaces that are extra medullary spaces. Okay, the beads are almost ready. We can just play along with them, make them a little firmer, a little more rounded, so they don't fall off. We still have time. Uh, the cement is starting to settle down now and now it's the time that we will score the chest tube it's a good time to now score the chest tube and get the cement rod out without damaging see it's getting ready and it's getting a little warm as well right so now we'll take a surgical blade and gradually score it down and make sure that we do not damage the rod from the inside
There we go. That's the cement rod, right? It has the beaded tip at the end. It is embedded inside, but this will support you when you have to extract it outside. It will support the whole column of the cement and provide uniform force over it. Right, it's firm, very much firm now. And now we can bend it at the tip so it makes a u-shaped curve so it can be extracted easily you are using a t-handle you can use any instrument you want like a couple of pliers Cutter, please. Perfect. So this is the hook that we were talking about and it will be good to just hook something in and take it out later. Right? Okay. And now we can demonstrate the cement beads as well. So these are ready as well. You can see they are firm, hard and these can be inserted into the cavity that is infected these are mounted with suture uh, th knots at the end and make sure whenever you are inserting cement rods that you have counted the number of beads sorry cement beads yet you have counted the number of beads that are out there if you do not remember then you might be ending up in extracting the beads uh, and left, uh, left uh, you may leave behind some of them inside the cavity and that can lead to another surgery for no reason Okay, thank you.